Today, I'm going to discuss seven segment LED displays and how to use them in a variety of applications. So example projects that I've done are the dice shield, the analog temperature monitor, and the clock shield. And all of these are for an Arduino Pro Mini. So to get started, I'm gonna take it down to the simplest example possible. We're gonna just start with a single seven segment LED display. And the data sheet on this looks like this, where you have your segment drawn out in an alphanumeric pattern where each segment has a different letter that labels it. So for example, this is A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and then the decimal point. And this is consistent, at least as far as I've seen, with all data sheets for all of these LED segment displays. They come in two varieties, common anode and common cathode. And basically what that means is that either all the LEDs, it's basically the direction that the LED goes. So all the LEDs are either going from ground, each segment needs to be connected in this case to the high voltage in the common cathode case or to ground in the common anode case. So let's just focus on the common anode because wiring, especially if you're controlling this with a, a microcontroller, the wiring is the same. It's just the programming will need to be flipped. So basically you have a pin, or in this case for this guy, because there's 10 pins, there's two pins that connect to the common pin that controls whether or not the LED matrix is on and the LED display is on. And then each of these pins controls which segment will be lit up. So for example, if we wanted to display a one, we need to have B and C illuminated. So that means we need to connect this pin to high and this pin and this pin to low. And that will allow current to flow from pin three or eight to four, illuminating the C or, and actually at the same time, pin three or eight through B, illuminating this segment. So you'd get your one. If you wanted, for example, a four, you would have to do the same, only you would also need the F and the G. So we would also have to connect these two to negative. Now you can control this with an Arduino or another microcontroller by setting either these pins to high at the same time or to set them to input um, because setting input basically disconnects the pin. So you can think of it as disconnecting the pin. Additionally, when you design your PCB, because these are LEDs, they have a maximum voltage that should be across the LED. So you want to connect a resistor at this location in all of the segments. Don't connect it here because depending on how many LEDs you need illuminated, you need to have the same resistance in line with the LED. So that means that each LED segment is going to need its own resistor. They can't share one by putting it up here. Uh, and again, for the same principle, when you're working with common cathode, the resistor goes here. Okay, so then let's say we want to make a system where there are two of these, or if you're making a clock, you need four of these. Well, it's basically the same principle as the LED matrix displays. Only in this case, instead of maybe five or eight, you always just have the parts of, or the, the number 
of components that are within your seven segment, or in this case, it's actually an eight segment display. So how does that look? Well, you have two of these common anode um, seven segment displays that are next to each other. And in your Arduino, you don't really have enough pins, especially for the clock shield, to just have them act independently. So what you can do is you can, just like in the uh, multi-segment display, you can control one number at a time by having this be connected to one pin. So basically these are left separate, but each one of these segments is connected in your PCB. Okay, and so then when you want to turn this one on, you would just set this to high while setting this to low or setting it to um, input. And then that would allow this one to be illuminated. Setting this to high while setting this to low allows these LEDs to be illuminated. So by switching back and forth, basically blinking which number you want displayed on each um, seven segment display, you can display two numbers at a time by only having, basically in this case, nine segments for the eight segment display plus one for each additional um, number you want to display. So in the case of the dice, you would need nine plus one would be 10. In the case of a clock, you'd need 12. And then the last thing, because you're only illuminating one of these numbers at a time, they can actually share their resistors without a problem. And so that is how you would wire up the tiny dice display. So I hope that helped you understand how these work and how to program them a little bit and how to use them in your future hacking applications.